Good morning. We welcome you to our worship this morning. We are so happy to have you with us online. A reminder that next Sunday we return to in-person worship. And it will be so wonderful to see some of you again in person. But again, I'm reminding you that if your health is compromised, if you are vulnerable, please, please stay home and be safe and join us online. In the order of service that I sent to you, I've been sending it to you for the past several weeks, you do have the protocol that the church council has developed for when we turn to in-person worship in an effort to keep everyone safe. And I hope that you have read that and making yourself familiar with it because we do want to protect our worshipers as much as possible. Please remember to call or to send cards to our folks who are at Glenwood or at Heritage Manor. And also please note ways in which you can help during this COVID crisis, ways you can help with our ministry. Don't forget, I'm, I'm looking for some pictures from Flat Jesus and I'm not seeing many. So please take your pictures with Flat Jesus. If you need a Flat Jesus, we will be happy to mail one to you or to deliver one to you. And then also don't forget uh, your creative art projects that you've been doing while you've been at home. We would like to see what you've been doing, so send a picture to the church email and we will have an art show in the future. At this time, let us turn our hearts and our minds to God in worship. Awake, the light of God is breaking through the darkness. We worship the light and unyielding sign of hope in times of trouble. Do not fear. The love of Christ opens up a space of respite and peace for us. We worship the light, the sanctuary of rest. Delight in the gifts of the Spirit who sets a table of welcome for all. Surely Let us join together in prayer. Come, Lord, be light for our path and a lamp in our darkness. Come, Lord, fill our days with song and our nights with blessing. Come, Lord, deepen our prayers for others and quicken our steps to do justice. Come, Lord, enlighten our worship and bless us with peace. Amen. Good morning. 
But again, I don't want you to take any chances. Well, have you ever been in the middle of a thunderstorm at home and the lights go out? And sometimes that can be very scary. But your parents probably either lit a candle so you would have some light, or they use a little flashlight. And that way you can see in the darkness. And you might have even been surprised at how much light that candle or that flashlight gave off when it was darkness all around you. Well, there are other ways to get light into our lives besides the actual light of the flashlight or the candle. The Bible tells us that God's Word, Scripture, is a lamp for our feet, a light for our path. And that's why I have a special lamp burning, to remind us of that. And as we study the Bible and as we learn more about Scripture, what we learn lights our path as we grow up. And it shows us the way that we should, we should go. It shows us the way that God wants us to grow and to be and to journey through our lives. And so I hope that you will remember that the next time when our might go off. Don't be frightened. Remember that God gives us light. And God gives us a way to see the path in front of us. And God will always take care of us. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, your word is indeed a lamp for our feet and a light for our hand. Help us to follow your light in all things. Amen. As we gather together in prayer, I would draw your attention to the names that are listed in your order of service. Let us pray to God. Gracious God, your word is a lamp for our feet, a light to our paths. You are the fountain of all wisdom, the life source from whom we learn about all that is good and pure and merciful and compassionate. Thank you for the example of your son who in all things modeled peacemaking, love for others, and the wisdom that comes from walking rightly with you. Just as people were drawn to him, we draw near to you, wanting to know you, to experience your presence in transforming ways, and to be renewed by your spirit. We open ourselves to you. Do your holy work in us, healing us, correcting us, comforting us and encouraging us. And may we, as a result, be the incarnation of your presence in our world. For the sake of Christ, we pray. Amen. This is the time in our worship when we would normally collect our offering. And because we are meeting online, we are collecting our offering in a different way. And we are so grateful for those of you who mail your offerings into the church office and for those of you who have signed up for our online giving through our webpage. We continue to give thanks for you and to bless you for remembering the church and our mission together. Let us pray. God only wise, accept our offerings, the fruit of our labor and lives, in obedience of our faith, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Psalm 119, 105 through 112. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 
I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked has laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your de decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Our New Testament reading comes from Matthew 13. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, sow and he, as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path some of the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sword. Then anyone, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what has been on the, on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what has for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, and another sixty, and another thirty. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Eighty-year-old John went on to his annual checkup, and the doctor asked him if he was still getting up in the middle of the night and going to the bathroom. And he replied, yes, but the Lord has made it much better for me. He turns on the light when I go in, and he turns off the light when I'm done. And the doctor replied, really? And about an hour after that, the doctor called John's wife just to fill her in and let her know. And, and he, she, he looks fine, the doctor said. But he said that God is making it better for him to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Uh, he said that God turns the light on and off for him. And John's wife replied, oh, that old fool. He's been going to the bathroom in the refrigerator again. The words of Psalm 119, verse 105, are very special to me. And I often use them as a confirmation verse for my confirmands. And indeed, this was Noah's confirmation verse. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. These words have been set to music numerous times, but the most well-known is probably the anthem Thy Word by Michael Smith and Amy Grant, and that's what Dennis played as the prelude. So thank you very much, Dennis. Have you ever truly been in the dark? A darkness so deep, no light is visible. No shadows, no reflection, 
nothing. Well, when I was in elementary school in Louisville, my class went on a field trip to Mammoth Cave, which, if you've never been, is well worth the drive and the trip. And we were in a large cavern, and at one point, our guide had all the lights turned off. So we were in the darkness, total darkness. I mean, you literally could not see your hand in front of your face. That is how dark it was. And even though he warned us what he was going to do, it was still very frightening to be completely in the dark. I mean, your mind just instantly starts thinking, oh my gosh, how will I ever get out of here? I'm, I'm going to be stuck here because you, I can't see where I'm going. But then the lights came back on, and we all breathed a sigh of relief and said, oh, we weren't scared at all. Well, in this psalm, the writer is on a metaphorical path. I believe it is the path of life, the life laid out in front of him by God. And in verse 105, it would appear that somehow his path has been obscured by the darkness, making his path unclear until the light of God's word shines upon it. Well, sometimes we find ourselves in the dark. We haven't a clue as to where we are going or what lies ahead. It's like being in an uncharted territory, a phrase we have used quite often these past two years. There are no road signs, there are no landmarks, uh, there's not even a candle or a flashlight, much less a smartphone or infrared night vision goggles. We are in the dark, afraid to move. And that is a frightening place to be, but not for the psalmist. If the path were a familiar one, we might not need a light. Uh, we know the way so well, we can navigate uh, in the dark without fear. And we could even lead someone else along that path if we needed to. But the text implies, however, that the psalmist or the traveler is not only in the dark, he is walking an unknown path. The lamp becomes an important way to illuminate the way before him so that he can see where he is stepping. And it lights the path ahead, and that's important, so that you can see where you're going, and you can be careful not to trip and fall, causing injury. It also gives you a warning of what lies ahead. You don't want to take a step and go right over a cliff, or fall into a ditch. We want to have a sense of where we are going. I mean, think about driving your car. You're going on a, a narrow country road that's unfamiliar to you. Maybe it's late at night, you're tired after a long day, and it starts to rain a little. And you may decide that your low beams, uh, your low beam lights are not enough to show you the road ahead, and so you turn on the high beams. You want to see what hazards might lie ahead. You know, is there a sharp turn coming up, or a downed tree branch, or a deer making a dash to the other side? Sometimes in the darkness, a simple flashlight will suffice, or even a candle, or the low beams of our car. But other times, the path may be unknown or dangerous. And then we want the high beams, or even a spotlight, maybe a helicopter with a spotlight. Well, the psalmist tells us that God's word casts light on any obstacle blocking the right path, the path that God has set for us. So what are some of the dangers lurking on our journey through life? It could be job-related or school-related, it could be raising our children, maybe some bad habits we know we should quit. 
It could be an electronic addiction to smartphones and tablets or gaming consoles that interferes with our interpersonal relationships. It could be toxic relationships or purposefully ignoring what you know to be the right thing to do. And some are like potholes in the midst of our path that need to be filled in and paved over. And while others are an obstacle like a fallen tree that needs to be cut up and removed. Sometimes the path is straight with no hazards or dangers ahead. But it can quickly become unpredictable, uncertain, and hazardous. God's word casts light on best practices that are most likely to result in a life well lived. A life that isn't like a roller coaster with extreme curves and dips and valleys. When God's word casts the high beams on our paths, we will see that a well lived life is one that is given in service to others in which words are used to encourage, in which self-denial is a good thing, in which we are outrageously kind and generous, in which we try to make life less difficult for others, in which we work for justice and peace, in which we show mercy, in which we practice religious, spiritual piety, and in which we are grateful for the smallest of blessings. This past week, I drove to Indiana to visit Nick and Addison for a few days, and it's a path I am very familiar with. I have driven it any number of times. And I have yet to ever see so many work zones And the truck travel was triple the normal amount. So it was an interesting drive, to say the least. But it was a reminder that our lives are not built overnight. Life itself is a journey. And sometimes we have to put up the orange cones and work on it. God's word helps us to build and to mend and grow along the way. If you are walking in the dark, you need to keep the light training on the path ahead. You can't shine it on the side bushes or the trees overhead. You need to focus on the path you are traveling. God's word is given to us as a lamp for our feet, a light for our path. It's also an internal guidance system helping us to follow the right path. No matter how much darkness may envelop our lives, the light of God's word will shine through, reminding us that in Christ we are children of the light. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall never overcome it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we leave our worship, may the word of God light our path and illumine our way. And may God's Spirit empower us to be a light for others. In the name of the kind God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.